Hello my friends, welcome back to the channel, always with you in Shafiwi. In this video, we are going to talk about testing private functions. Let's get started. So let's pretend the following. We do have an email service class in which we can send emails. Basically, we give it some parameters in order to do the send. And here is simulation of sending that email. One of the components of sending the email is to format the email subject, basically. All right? So here we format the subject and the message like the following. And this function is private, as you can see. Now, in some circumstances, we want to test this private function alone. Why we want to do that? Because the users of our email service, I don't want them to depend on this format email. Because let's say in the future, I want to change this implementation of format email to another thing. Let's say if it gets more complex, I will replace it with custom class that can do this formatting. Keep in mind, this is simple. That's why we are doing this function. Usually the formatting, we do it as collaborator class. For that reason, it is considered as a not best practice to test private function. Even though you can test private function, where the first option you can do is just to delete that private keyword and do the testing and keep it like that. But this creates a problem because other people can use this function and depend on it in other things not directly if you're using email, maybe formatting email to store it or something else. And this is maybe a sign to pull up this function into another collaborator. That's perfectly fine. I will show you another way which keeps this function private and you can test it also just for the purpose of testing, which is by using reflection. Because the main important thing is that we are using this private keyword to give the compiler the access to not make this function usable outside this uh, class. But by using reflection, we can change this parameter to call this function into the test. We'll show that in a minute. But before that, there is a great website called shouldITestPrivateMethods.com. This is a great website that contains all you need in order to test private function. If you go to it, simply you'll get no, because this is the answer. Should I test private methods? No. Why? Because it's not considered as best practice and you shouldn't do that. And this should be a sign for you for your code design. Why? Because if you want to test this private function, it means two things. Maybe you don't have the confidence that this function is working fine, because usually we test this private function through other public methods. So by testing this send email, I am testing this format email. But in certain circumstances, some functions are pretty big and complex and can contain many states and configuration that we can test them publicly via the public function. For that reason, it is assigned to move this complex function into its own object. And then you can test this object, of course. That's the best option. Otherwise, maybe for your circumstances, you really need to test the private method. Of course, we have the value, but this should be for nerd problem. It's not generic practice we do often in software development. So in order to test this function, well, I have this email service test. Basically, I'm creating the email, I'm formatting the email. Usually we do format email, but this is private function, that's why I have an error. And then I want to just assert what I'm doing. So here is the email, I want to test private methods, please. So in order to tell the compiler that it is fine for the moment to test this format email, we'll do it like the following, where it contains some work. But before that, there is an annotation that works in Android world called visible for testing, which is this one, but it has another package, which is Android X annotation. Here is this class, right? It denotes that the class method feed visibility is relaxed so that it's more widely visible than otherwise necessarily to make code testable. Here is this function. It is public for testing. Otherwise, it is protected. So you can use this one in Android, but here in pure JUnit test, you can't use that. You can use this one for testing purposes, but this goes well in Java, not in Kotlin, because what you can do is the following, you can remove private and make it for package visibility. And that's how our classes can't access the method, but you can't access it in the test. You can't do that. This comes from a Google common annotation, which is Google Java project, Guava. And now let me delete that. And now let's get back in order to access this function with reflection. First, we start by creating the method object itself. We do that like the following. We get this service, right? And here we use Java class and here there is a lot of things you can access them. One of those is get declared methods. Here you give it the name. Our function name is format email. Give it as a string, okay? If you do a typo here, it will be a problem, of course. Then you need to give it, you see, var out parameter types. So what are the parameter type of this function? It has two strings. So I can put the first string and of course the second string. That's how you declare the function. And now we need to make it accessible because it is private. If you try to call it right now, it won't work. So you do method dot is accessible and you change it to true. By default, this will be false, of course. And then we need to get the values. So here we are going to call it. So here is how we call it. Basically, we do method dot invoke. 
and we give it the object from which we are invoking, which is in our case, the service. And then we give it the different var args of the parameters. Here, here are the parameters you are passing, so I can paste them here. And the result, it will be in any, so you have to cast it to a string. So I can change this one here, and then I should expect the test to pass. So here we go. The test is passing, and here is how you can test private function. Now keep in mind that this is a lot of things going on with the reflection, and it makes completely the code unreadable. But for certain circumstances, of course, if you have to do it, well, of course, you have the option here. Okay, so this is how you test private function if you have really a rare case in which you want to use it. Otherwise, it is considered as a bad practice to test private function. You should test this private function through public function, of course. And if you are doing some kind of test-driven development, you won't get this issue at all. Because in the first step, defining the public interface won't get this problem, of course. And then in the refactoring, we are going to extract this private function as needed. So you always have the coverage 100%, and you are extracting and making your code more modular with functions and objects. That's it for this video. Tell us below in the comments your feedback on this video. Thanks a lot for watching this video to the end. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and see you in the next videos. Salam alaikum.